Today I'm going to be unboxing, building, and modding the GMK67. Um, this is sort of the go-to budget king in the keyboard community, and I thought I would see what all the hype is about. You can find this keyboard on AliExpress for about $50, and it comes with a surprising amount of stuff, as I'll show you soon. I've already disassembled the board just to see what was included before making the video, uh, but I clearly didn't do a good job of clipping it all back together. So this keyboard has a tri-mode PCB, which means that you can use it wired, with Bluetooth, or with the included dongle. Uh, it also has a toggle switch for Mac and Windows, which is nice. In the box, you get a braided USB-C cable, and a combination keycap and switch puller. So now I'll snap the case apart, which ended up being much more difficult than I expected. It would be easier if I had a plastic wedge tool, which is called a spudger, by the way. Um, but the case is totally plastic. At this price point, you can't really expect metal or aluminum, stainless steel, anything like that. Uh, so plastic is totally fine, but yeah, you can see I kind of struggle a bit here to get this apart. At least you know the knob is detachable. After removing the top part of the case, I'll unscrew the plate from the PCB. This plate is plastic, so I'm curious to see how this will influence the sound. This board comes with plate-mounted stabilizers, although it does apparently support both screw-in and clip-in variants. Underneath the plate is a pour-on foam, followed by a thin PCB foam. We have the PCB itself. And then underneath we have some case foam, which is kind of cheap feeling, and the battery. Now's a good time to mention that this is a gasket mount board, as you can see by the foam gasket surrounding the bottom of the case. I'm using KTT Kang White Linears for this build, mostly because I got them for 20 bucks, but I've heard that they're very good budget switches. They're a three pin kale style switch, not the vegetable. Gary stopped by to say hi. So for the first time in one of my keyboard builds, I'll be lubing the switches. I have to disassemble them all individually, and I bought a switch opener tool for this, but it doesn't work super well on these Kale style switches. It works fine on the Cherry MX uh, style switches, but these Kale ones for some reason uh, get stuck. So I had to use my fingernail to unclip one of the sides before using the opener. I separated each of the parts into their own containers, the top stem, the top housing, the bottom housing, and the springs. The springs go into a plastic bag because we'll be lubing them together. Alright, it's time to lube the springs. I'm going to add a few drops of this liquid Crytox 105 into the bag and give them a good shake to coat the springs evenly. In order to be a card carrying keyboard nerd, you have to hand lube your own switches. So I'll take a little bit of lube and apply it to the sides and bottom of the housing. Then I'll insert one of the springs. And then I'll take a top stem using this holder tool and apply some lube around all of the sides, being careful not to over lube it, although in this case I think I did. This is one of the first switches I did, so I didn't really get the hang of it until a couple in, but once I got into the groove, I think I was pretty even with my application of lube, so they should all feel pretty similar.
And then finally I'll put on the top housing. I lost the footage of me removing the stabs from the plate, but it's time to disassemble them, which I'll do by twisting the bar and popping it out of the bottom housing. To lube the stabs, I'll just apply a little bit of it on the side of the stem and then on the inside of the stem housing. I'll use the silicone grease to generously coat both sides of the stabilizer bar. To reassemble the stabilizers, I'll put the bar in between the stem and the stem housing and then twist to click into place. All the lubing is done, so we'll clip the stabilizers back into the plate. Just like with all my other builds, I'll do the tape mod, which is just adding a couple of layers of painter's tape to the back of the PCB. This is a really popular mod because it's a super cheap way to change the sound of your keyboard. Just remember to make little cutouts so everything can plug back into the PCB. All right, we're nearing the end, so it's time to reassemble the board. I'll plug everything back into the PCB. Then I'll put on the PCB and the pour-on foam. And finally the plate on top. I tried to do one of those cool transitions where I drop the keycaps on top of the board and it just appears finished, but I forgot to record the second part of that, so. And now the most important part, the sound tests.
Overall, I think this is a fantastic keyboard for the price. With some modification, it can sound and feel awesome, and I can't wait to play around with other configurations in the future.